Oh, mama, don't you cry. Because USA Hockey is do or die. Your Locked On Sharks, your daily podcast on the San Jose Sharks. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Hello, welcome to Locked On Sharks, the premier hockey podcast covering your favorite tanking team in the Bay Area. My name is J.D. Young, contributor at San Jose Hockey Now. And I want to thank you for making Locked On Sharks your first listen, probably part of the Locked On Network. We cover your team every day. And if you want to be an everyday, all you have to do is just follow along wherever you get podcasts or you can watch on YouTube as well. Special Friday night, Saturday edition edition of locked on sharks here where we're going to talk about uh world juniors and then i have michael from locked on leafs where we had a great conversation we talked about all-star snubs we talked and then we kind of talked about the sharks leafs uh kind of what to expect in this game we talked about mario faro being a potential fit uh for the toronto maple leaves and all that good stuff but we have to start with world juniors um as the sharks Prospects, four prospects in the World Juniors finals, and Will Smith. Will Smith shines, shines um, as the Team USA defeats Team Sweden uh, in Sweden. Um, winning this game was six to two. Uh, they uh, added empty netter, all that fun stuff. But um, before we get into that, do want to let you guys know that today's episode is brought to you guys by Sleeper. Download the Sleeper app. Use promo code Locked On NHL to get a hundred dollars uh, match on your first deposit. Terms and conditions apply. See Sleeper's terms of use for details. So Will Smith, after much pearl clutching and hand wringing and worrisome, oh no, Will Smith having a bad tournament. Um, once the elimination game, once the games really started out, the elimination game started, Will Smith got better and better and better every game he played. Um, you know, even in the, the quarterfinals um, or the, the conference or whatever, the semifinals, excuse me, um, was the BC line was amazing. And Will Smith produced in that game. And then in teams, you know, in, in the gold medal game, a true as true as a, a road game as you're going to get with you know um, I, I don't know how many fans 15 20,000 Swedish fans rooting against you Will Smith had his best game of the tournament and helped propel team USA to their victory um this morning today yesterday whenever you let Will this this is what you want as the stakes get higher Will Smith just proved like this. This is, and again, I don't want to go into this tournament, right? You don't want to take out too much. You don't want to overreact too much one way or too much the other way. But this is what you're, you're hoping to see as Will Smith continues his development path that in these big moments, right? That kind of clutch factor um, that he can deliver and two primary assists um, was, you know, literally like six inches away from at potting two goals, uh, had a breakaway that he just missed. Also had a kind of a nice play um, in the offensive zone where he goes and kind of retrieves the puck um, from a board battle and kind of just works his way into the middle and just barely misses on a backhand. Like with Will Smith popped one of those goals, he's the player of the game. Um, and you, you, it's impossible to argue that he wasn't, if not the best player um, for Team USA today. Like, this is what you want to see, right? Yes. Did he have a bit of a tough start to the tournament? Yes. Wasn't what you wanted to see, right? But as the tournament went on, the stakes got higher. He, his line gained more confidence from the coaching staff. They and they produced. They produced that line. That line, that BC line, continues to be amazing. Um, like Will Smith, yeah. Like 
Will Smith's gonna be awesome. I don't like. I don't know what to tell you guys. Like Will Smith's gonna be awesome. So, um, yeah, he's definitely one of the biggest stories. Is just kind of how his game continues to grow. And you saw even in in the uh, semifinals game, right? His goal uh, was based on his. Shane had a really great article on kind of breaking down his goal um, that was started with a back check. Um, where he went basically back check, stole the puck, and then brought the puck up. And then he was the one kind of rewarded for that that goal there. Especially when US was down two nothing against Czechia, and he's a big reason why they came back and won that game. So um again, let's we as a, a fan base take a deep breath, especially beginning of tournaments, right? Let's let things play out. I think as Sharks fans, we're feeling way better about Will Smith's tournament than we did, you know, a week ago when when kind of the the at the end of uh, the round robin competition. And again, these games mean more. These games are you're playing better competition. You're playing like Will Smith was a huge piece. So um, Phil B said I thought had a really really quiet game today for Team Sweden. Um, and you saw Sweden is so kind of structure dependent. And I think U.S. with just their kind of talent was able to counteract and make Sweden really have to kind of work in their structure. And, you know, with, with just so many potential game breakers and guys, just elite athletes that the U.S. was able to put out there, it it messes with guys' structure, with the team structure. And yeah, B, not to say Bisa was bad. I just thought he was quiet. Um, you know, Matthias Hablet, I, I think he his stock coming going into the tournament and coming out of the tournament, um, he's a big riser, I think, for for the Sharks. You know, um, one of the big risers with his stock because of, you know, he produced, had another primary assist today. Um, and you, you know, he was relied upon offensively for Team Sweden. He was part of, I mean, they're again the round robin. They didn't give up a goal till the third game, and he was a big part of that with the way he played his defense. So, um, you know, I, I think Havlid Havlid had a, a, you know, a, I thought he had a pretty good game as well today. Um, and then Eric Polkamp played two shifts. Uh, congrats to him though, winning. You know, he was part of this team. Was a you know this, especially in the round robin, right? Had to step in there and, and play a role for Team USA when, you know, a guy, I think, I forget who, uh, Seamus, Seamus Casey was sick, I believe, had to come in and, you know, kind of play a much bigger role. And he did what he was asked, right? He's still, um, didn't get to play as much today, but he's still part of this winning team. So congrats to Team USA. Um, yeah, it was, it was a really fun game to watch, um, especially, you know, Right to Sweden, they they made it tight here, um, but yeah, Team USA. I think just too much talent. Um, that kind of Sweden just couldn't. They kind of held on, held on, held on. But there's too much talent from Team USA. So, um, but yeah, super fun World Juniors. I can't wait for next year. We'll see if Will Smith will be back or maybe he's in the NHL. Who knows? We'll see. Um, but I mean, if Will Smith's back next year, he's going to be like first line center. Kind of think of the Cutter Gauthier role. Um, that's gonna be Will Smith next year. Like if, if he's back for for this for World Juniors, um, and then you're potentially adding Quentin Musty to the mix. Like you're gonna Team USA is gonna be really fun again um, next year. So um, yeah, we'll try to get somebody you know on here really soon. You know to to discuss some of the Sharks prospects in the tournament, what they thought of them. Um, but because again, right, we're Sharks fans. We're going to be with prospect with your own prospects. You're always kind of saying they're the, how awesome they are um and i'm just as guilty of that as as always right you're rooting for your guys to, to do well but we'll get somebody uh you know uh on here to come on and tell us again how great our prospects are because the sharks do have great prospects so um but yeah we'll get into now uh so mikey uh, or michael from um uh locked on leafs we have a nice conversation about the all-star uh game we talk about kind of some of the snubs uh we talk about Tomas hurdle you know we just have a nice conversation and at the end we also talk about um the sharks lease and kind of where the franchises are at um you know kind of the path that the leaves have potentially provided for the sharks and if mario faro might be a good fit for for toronto so uh, we'll get to all that here in just one second 
as the NFL season is nearly ready to wrap up, but there's still time to get on the action with FanDuel, America's number one sports book. Right now, new customers can get $150 in bonus bets guaranteed when you place a $5 bet. It's $150 in bonus bets, win or lose. The app is super easy to use. There's so many different ways to bet, like live same game parlays. So if a guy starts to heat up, um, you know, maybe you want to start hitting the over, or maybe a guy starts with a bad game and you're like, you know what? I don't think he's going to turn around. Maybe a time to kind of hit the under on some of his uh, yards or touchdowns. Um, you can find bets at the new explore tab. Um, so you can kind of see what else is out there that way, you know, expand your horizons. Um, you can make a parlay in the parlay hub. That way it's easy to see what everyone else is. So if you want to jump in on that, or maybe if you want to fade what uh, everybody else in the public is doing. So visit FanDuel.com slash locked on and make your first bet a layup. FanDuel, official partner of the NFL. Welcome back into the Locked On Leafs podcast. Uh, we're doing a crossover edition here of Locked On Leafs and Locked On Sharks with J.D. Young now joining me, the host over at Locked On Sharks. What's going on, J.D.? How you doing? Uh, it's uh, doing well. Uh, well, no, the sharks are terrible. <laughs> hang it in there. We'll just say hang it in there. Counting down the days towards the draft. So, yeah, yeah. You know, the, the Leafs went through that too, you know, and then all of a sudden you end up with, uh, with an Austin Matthews and Mitch Marner and Nylander and you come out on the other side and you know, things are looking pretty good for the Maple Leafs now, hopefully five to, you know, seven years from now, uh, you could start seeing some of those, uh, some of those guys pay off these, these tough years pay off uh, down the stretch. Yes. If you end up getting some good draft picks along the way. That's the hope. That's, that's what keeps me going. <laughs> yeah. I mean, that's, that's what has to keep you going is uh, today yeah. sucked. Five years from now, hopefully it works out for the best. Um, speaking of, you know, Matthews and, and uh, you know, being an amazing all-star, he was selected as the Maple Leafs representative at the all-star game. Thomas Hurdle will represent the Sharks. Uh, I'm curious, was there any debate out there whether or not, uh, you know, there was someone else who might get the nod or was he kind of the most logical choice for the Sharks? Uh, he was the most logical choice, uh, easily, you know, leads the, the team in in points, uh, especially with Logan Couture being out this season, has kind of taken on that leadership role. Uh, it's easily been the Sharks' best player kind of from the beginning to then. You could make a, a an argument for Mikel Granlin, who kind of came on after uh, American Thanksgiving uh, and has been, you know, one of uh, the Sharks' best players since then. Uh, but I think with Hurdle kind of being the hometown guy, like it's it's it has to be Hurdle right now, especially Again, with everything he's done on the ice and off the ice as the Sharks have uh, navigated the, this kind of tough season. Uh, I mean, those are the only two players on the roster who have over 20 points is Granlin and Hurdle. Uh, but yeah, it, it was Tomas Hurdle and it really wasn't much of a debate. Yeah, I thought so too. Like when I was going through it, I was in my head. I'm thinking a uh, hurdle probably is the the, the you know, most logical choice, I suppose. To your point, you could make the debate that Granlin maybe is playing some some better hockey of late. Uh, there's a couple of young guys, like I guess it, it, it seems like that Fabian Zetterlin kid's starting to kind of come on a little bit, but definitely not uh, not not making it over over Thomas Hurdle. So I'm I, I'm with you where I think that that was a team where. It was pretty much a slam dunk it was it was very yeah. easy choice for the nhl the least it wasn't as easy like you you had two players like austin matthews ends up getting the nod but there's a lot of people in this market in toronto that believe that you know william elander has been the better player of the two and that's i'd say it's something like matthews is 30 goals this season leads the nhl but Nylander might be the team's MVP at this point in the year, which, again, it's probably crazy to hear if you're sitting in San Jose and haven't been tracking this team that, you know, there's another guy who stood above uh, above Austin Matthews. But uh, Matthews did get the nod for Toronto. And, hey, who knows? I, I think it's it's – probable that Nylander will get himself there is the fan vote for the initial yes. the additional 12 spots so i'm not kind of worried but about that um, no, he oh. will he will be there yeah like i i would be shocked if he's not there uh especially i mean it's not like toronto some tiny market where you're not going to get the no. fan vote to uh yeah. especially with it being in, in toronto it's interesting we have uh actually you guys are hosting the NHL All Stars. San Jose is hosting the AHL All Stars. So it's kind of a night we get we get the oh, nice. All Star collaboration here. Here, so yeah, it's gonna be uh, where the the week the weekend after. Uh, but yeah, it, it's a 
it, yeah, Nylander will be there, and uh, I get it, you know. But I think with with Matthews, of course, like uh, which we're, we're going to talk about the skills competition. You wonder if Matthews might be, you know, might have a little bit of an edge with with some of the potential skill stuff. Uh, if they're maybe they're trying to, you know, galaxy brain this and and for him to try to win that million dollars. <laughs> Well, I, I don't know if it's galaxy branding. I, I think if you're the <laughs> NHL, how difficult would that have been to keep your leading goal scorer, you know, out of these selections? You know, and like, one of the faces a, of the NHL, like face of the know, NHL, you're, as, you're trying to market as, well, him, as great as states like. Yeah, as great as Nylander is, like most people know Austin Matthews, like, you know, he's been on uh, he's been on shell like it's Austin Matthews is just a more marketable star. Uh, and that, that makes sense. Right. Uh, but yeah, it, it's we're we're kind of splitting hairs. They're both going to be there. It, it's yeah. not a, not an issue. So, yeah, completely agree. Uh, outside of our two clubs, though, Toronto and uh, and San Jose, were there were there any surprises to you? Anything jump out to you as as a, a surprise player who got named or any major snubs? Uh, I think the surprise. One of the surprise I was talking to our good friend Jay over at Locked On Blue Jackets, and Boone Jenner getting selected. He's not even. Uh, he hasn't played. He's got a broken jaw. He's. Uh, yeah. I, I know they don't really have any, but I think this would have been a perfect time. For Adam Fantilli, who's going to be one of your next superstars in the front, and you know, and uh, he's had a pretty solid rookie season. Like, get that train going, and we know the NHL, you know, continually kind of shoots itself in the foot when it comes to marketing stuff. But that seemed like a, you know, especially with Boone Jenner being out and not even going to be able to play, sending Adam Fantilli, uh, who is deserved on that team, get that marketing going. Let's start kind of building, you know building up the, the how great this uh, 2023 rookie class is with uh, Leo Carlson, uh, Adam Fantilli, and then, you know, of course, Connor Bedard, like start getting that going. Yeah, I'm, I'm with you. I, I you know, kind of gave my thoughts a little bit earlier on the show, talking about some players really briefly who I thought were questionable. Uh, and Boone Jenner was one of those guys. I mean, let's be honest. I, I don't know where you sit on this, but I still think it's very gimmicky and, and, and goofy that every team has to be there. Like, if no player is good enough on the Blue Jackets... They just shouldn't have a representative and, and no disrespect to, to your sharks, but it's kind of a <laughs> similar thing. Like, I, I don't like, yeah. okay, they had to pick someone. So they're like, well, we'll just send hurdle. But I think there are many other players who are more worthy than hurdle. And then Boone Jenner and, you know, a couple other players like Tom Wilson was a guy for me. I looked at that Tom Wilson, him getting added to this group. And I'm thinking to myself, I don't even know if Tom Wilson would be a are top we- <laughs> three guy for me on the caps. How did he end up getting the nomination? Like, and I thought, is yeah. he having a good year? And I haven't noticed. I went and I looked. He's like fourth in team scoring. So it's not even like he's leading the way quietly. He is not leading in goals. And, uh, you know, then I thought, oh, maybe it's the Toronto angle. Like, he's a GTA guy. Mm. And then I thought to myself, but so is Dylan Strom. And Dylan Strom's having a better year than, than Tom Wilson. So that one to me was probably the one where I look at and, and I really scratch my head over that one. I think with that too, it's like even though Ovechkin's having a, a terrible season, I think he should still just get the oh. legacy pick, right? Just keep sending yeah. Ovechkin because Ovechkin's awesome. Like, yes, one hundred percent, one hundred percent. It's the it's the marketing of the stars, and uh, yeah, Tom Wilson. Uh, it's like that. Tom Wilson's going. Uh, I think he's hated by every franchise other than Caps fan. Like he is just yeah, yeah. Uh, again, NHL doing what again? So. <laughs> Yeah, that one was uh, that one was one that I thought was odd. Uh, another one that not that it was odd, but where I think that you, you use the word snub. I think Noah Dobson was snubbed from a, a selection in uh, in New York over the Islanders. Like Mark, Matthew Barzell, he got the nod. He's got ten goals, twenty seven assists for thirty seven points. But look at Noah Dobson quietly having a terrific season: six goals, thirty points. 30 assists for 36 points. There's only one point shy of Barzell. And if you look at what he's been able to do on the Island, like this guy's winning a lot of shifts. This guy's doing some terrific mm-hmm. things out there. Um, I-, I thought that that probably would have been a- an option for them to get another defenseman in there. Cause only one defender actually was chosen in the Eastern conference. Um, funny enough. So I thought, Noah Dobson could have been a, a no-brainer to get at least a second guy from the East out there. And to me, he's probably more worthy over Matt Barzell. So I think Noah Dobson is is one of the bigger snubs out there for myself. What about you? Uh, I mean, 
uh, when it comes to stuff, because it's again, it, it's having to play this like you know representative for for you know you look at a team like New Jersey, who I know it hasn't had a the a success you would expect from them, uh, but like they have so many great players. I know Jack Hughes is going to be going, but like you know you look at you know like, 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 Sprat <laughs> could go, um, you know, or even looking at like a former Shark like Eric Carlson, who I know he's had a little bit of an up and down season with the Penguins, but still Eric Carlson's pretty awesome. Chris Letang, who's having a great year as well. Like there's, I'm sure both those guys, one or both of those guys, could potentially get in as well. But yeah, especially on the East where you only nom- have one defenseman so far, and then you're going to be kind of leaving up to the van fan vote to try to get in a bunch of defensemen or or you could just like me in defenses for nerds and just play a bunch of forwards so <laughs> yeah i mean it could be the case if that's i mean it's an all-star game that's that's it's all an all-star game who cares anyway yeah, yeah it, it would make sense to do that i think there was a team last year if i'm not mistaken that didn't have a defenseman like legitimately they didn't vote one in they didn't choose one and they had to play like all nine skaters were, were forward so uh, i guess might be a similar situation uh this year so if you want to make an all-star game kids don't play the blue line play forward <laughs> that's ultimately forward. what people are doing play forward Again, defense is for nerds go score a bunch of goals <laughs> that's it that's right um i will say this though like having two of the league's top five scorers be snubs in Nylander and Panarin also is, is an interesting choice. Ultimately, I think they'll both get there. Don't get me wrong. Yeah. But uh, yeah, it's, it's just kind of funny when you look at it that way. All right, let's take uh, let's take a quick break here, JD. Let's come back and let's get into tomorrow night's matchup. Got the Leafs taking on San Jose down in the shark tank. So we will preview that game when we return, but, all right, guys, before we continue with Mikey from Locked on Leafs, uh, we're going to talk about the Sharks-Leafs game, um, talk about Meyer Fro, all that good stuff uh, here in just one second. It's the halfway point of the season, and Sharks fans, you guys know it has been a miserable one, but regardless of the Sharks' current standings, I want to remind you that you can win big by playing Daily Fantasy Hockey on Sleeper, the official Daily Fantasy app of the Locked On NHL Network. Sleeper is our number one choice for Daily Fantasy Sports, especially Daily Fantasy Hockey, because with Sleeper, you can win 100 times your cash in Daily Fantasy Hockey contests. All you have to do is just pick some of your favorite players, whether they're NHL superstars like McDavid, Crosby, or McKinnon, or some of your favorite sharks like Tomas Hurdle, Slippery Peep, uh, record more or less than their sleeper projections for things like goals, assists, saves, plus, minus, and more in a given game. 20, 100 times bet on sleeper, you need to correctly predict the outcome of eight player stats. You heard me, Sharks fans. You win 100 times your money playing daily fantasy hockey with sleeper. So start paying attention and nail your picks so you can start winning big. Use promo code locked on NHL and you'll get a hundred dollar match on your first deposit. Terms and conditions apply. That's code locked on NHL. See sleepers terms of use for details and locational availability. Welcome back into the Locked On Leafs and Locked On Sharks crossover here. We got these two clubs taking on one another tomorrow night down in the Shark Tank. Uh, Toronto, uh, so far 2-0 and on their California trip. They'll be hoping to make it 3-0, and make it a, a sweep down in California against the San Jose Sharks. But JD, who joins me, the host of the Locked On Sharks podcast, um, you know, it's, it's been a bit of a tough year for San Jose. I don't think anybody uh, can can say otherwise. But if I'm not mistaken, I mean, again, I've been watching from afar, just kind of been tracking it from afar. But it looks like the Sharks are at least playing some better hockey of late. So maybe a, a better test than what the Sharks were doing back in October when, you know, they were getting blown out 10 nothing, 10 one Probably shouldn't expect that if you're the Leaf fans, correct? Uh, yeah, I mean, this this team is, you know, we're... Uh, we are recording this before the Jets game on yeah. Thursday night. So the Sharks could be uh, most likely, I'm assuming, going to be entering this game on a 10 game losing streak. Uh, so only one behind matching their the start of the season. But they are playing better hockey. And it's very much, you can tell by the team, it's just a frustrating you know, because they do a lot of things right. But they just don't. They're so talent poor where they can't make up for any uh, mistakes and any mistakes just go catastrophic on them. And uh, we saw that on Tuesday against the Red Wings, where it's just, uh, you know, like the game winning goal goes off Kyle Burrow's foot into the goal. And it's like, 
just stuff like that happens to the Sharks all season. But uh, yeah, it has been a, a very tough go for San Jose this year. Uh, one thing, though, is, you know, the, the goaltending has actually been relatively good. If you look at the raw numbers, they don't look good, especially after, you know, you kind of give up 10 goals and you've, you're getting outworked most nights. But the goaltending combination of Capo Kakin and Mackenzie Blackwood have been a bright spot this year um, and have kept the Sharks in a lot more games than they're kind of used to, especially over the past couple of seasons when they've struggled to find goaltending, especially since uh, our good friend Martin Jones turned to a pumpkin uh, a few years ago and has now been kind of bouncing around the, the league. Hey, but Revenge um, game tomorrow night, buddy. Revenge game, Martin Jones in, in San Jose. You wait for it. Oh, it's either he's either going to have like a 40 save shutout or it's going to he's going to get pulled in the second period that there's no hey. in between with Martin Jones. Hey. Uh, <laughs> he's allowed one goal in the last two games. Went he, he shut out L.A. and then he went allowed one goal and an overtime win over Anaheim. We'll see what he can do on this old uh, California revenge trip against the Sharks tomorrow night. But. Yeah, I mean, uh, you, you know, uh, I, I fully expect that with the Sharks, uh, their big problem is they just the defense has tightened down. We've seen the scoring, you know, the opposing scoring come down, but the offense has still struggled to produce goals. Uh, coming out of the, the Christmas break, they've had one game where they've scored more than two goals uh, this season, and that was against the very porous uh, Red Wings uh, defense uh, earlier this week. But this team just struggles to consistently produce goals. And I think basically if the Leafs get to three, this game is over. So what you're saying is if you're a betting man over on FanDuel, under two and a half goals for the home side might be a play. Is what you're is what you're getting at. Potentially. Uh, I would uh, <laughs> definitely go that way again, especially with the the trends that the Sharks have had. Uh, again, you've seen they have been. Again, they've been doing a lot of things. You've seen a, a lot more consistent offensive pressure, especially compared to the beginning of the season where uh, they would spend, you know, 50 minutes out of the game just stuck in their own zone. You've seen more consistent pressure, and especially uh, with Graylin kind of starting to come around, like I said earlier, after after American Thanksgiving, you know, you've seen him his play kind of elevate that second line. Uh, but again, it's just they're, they can't take that next step to now, okay, putting the puck actually in the net. Uh, that, that's just a lot to ask for, for them. And if it, uh, it's not guys like Zettelin or hurdle or Granlin, it's, it's been tough to find goals. I'm curious as to, uh, and we're chatting with JD young, the host of the locked on sharks podcast. Uh, I'm curious to get your thoughts, you know, for a lot of my listeners who probably don't watch a lot of shark games, uh, you know, the long gone are the days of the household names of, you know, the Thorntons, the Marlowe's, uh, Brent Burns, obviously. So like, who are some of the guys who, you know, you think Leaf fans should be kind of keeping an eye on tomorrow night? Uh, yeah, I mean, Tomas Hurdle is kind of the main guy, but with him is the Sharks' uh, 2021 seventh overall pick, William Eklund, who's, you know, really, you know, has been slowly developing. You know, the Sharks have been very, very slow and meticulous with his development. He spent basically the entire season last year in the AHL. Um, this year, he's played really well, and you haven't seen the production again. That when this team you're, you're averaging like a goal and a half a game it's hard to get the production but William Eklund he does a lot of those things and you can tell once the Sharks getting start getting more kind of shooting talent around him uh, he's going to be a very very special player for San Jose for years to come uh, but yeah him he him and Hurdle have had a lot of uh, good chemistry so far they have uh very kind of different styles of play. Uh, Eklund's a very slippery type of player, especially behind the net. He's able to kind of uh, turn on a dime and, and create space that way and hurdle with his uh, puck protection, uh, kind of that net front presence. They have had a lot of uh, good opportunities there, but they're still kind of missing that like sniper type player on that line to, to really kind of complete that line. Uh, Fabian Zetterlin, who you, you mentioned earlier, who they got in the Timo Meyer trade from New Jersey. At a terrible end of the year last year with with San Jose, I think he had like three points in 22 games. Uh, but this off season, you could tell. I think uh, you know we don't talk about like when guys get traded, what that does to you kind of mentally. And I could you could tell that just going from a fun New Jersey team to the Sharks last season uh, was a, a 
bit of a kind of a, a shakeup for him. And he's coming to the season, has really found his game, and has be, been an awesome piece for San Jose. And he's been playing on, with Mikel Granlin for a good chunk. And he's, you know, kind of that bulldog, I'm going to go straight to the net type of player. Uh, but he, he's he been, you know, double-digit goals for the Sharks this year. Uh, he could be a guy to look at as a potential, just keep an eye on guy for if you're, you know, worried about a potential upset. So if, if Zetterling gets taught, uh, yeah, keep an eye on him. There is one other player you didn't mention that I do want to get your thoughts on because, um, you know, there was some chatter a little earlier in the year about whether or not Mario Ferraro could potentially be made available by the San Jose Sharks. And he's a guy that I've kind of identified as like a young top four ish uh, defenseman that maybe the Leafs should target. So tell me a little bit about uh, Mario Ferraro and, and, you know, if you think ultimately he's a guy that the Sharks would be willing to move on from it and maybe what it would take for that to happen. Yeah, I mean, Mario Ferro, he's a very interesting player in San Jose because uh, you kind of feel bad from where you, you saw, especially as a rookie, where you're like, okay, you can kind of see this his development and stuff. But I think he got overused and kind of having to play above his weight a lot, especially playing with offensive defensemen like Eric Carlson and Brent Burns, where he has kind of had to be the catch all when they go do you know go do uh, elite offensive things and you know sometimes that doesn't work out and he's been kind of having to be the guy to kind of take it you know kind of carry the load I, i'd say defensively um analytics like if you dig into like the analytics he is he's not that great but he's definitely like an eye test like Black shots, you know, great in the locker room, kind of that uh, old man hockey man versus like the analytics way. He, he's very much uh, a dividing factor. But a guy like Faro, I think, would be available if, for the right price. And uh, what that price is, I mean, I think you're probably looking at a potential second or third round pick uh, for a guy like Mario Faro. So it's two years left on his deal. It's at three point two five million dollars. Uh, so it's affordable ish i know that you guys are a little bit uh tight up there with the cap window but you know he kind of does provide a lot of that grit um you know that kind of competitiveness like he never gives up on a shift you see like he is a constantly moving constantly doing stuff um i think sometimes his positioning isn't the greatest and i, I think he overcomes a lot of it with just that kind of try hard mentality uh but again i think pairing him on the leafs where he's not having to be a top pairing shutdown defenseman that he is on the San Jose. And if he's more of like your fourth defenseman, you're probably in really good shape with a guy like Mario Ferraro, who's going to play a bunch of penalty kill minutes. You can play him 20 to 25 minutes a night. Um, He's going to, you know, like I said, he's going to kind of do everything and make all those sacrifices. He's one of the sh- top shot blockers in the NHL. And the dude is tough. Uh, he It looked like he had his sh- shoulder separated by Nathan McKinnon this week, and he's out there the next game. Like, it, it takes a lot to get uh, Mario Ferraro off the ice. I mean, he blocked it uh, last season, I believe. He blo- blocked a shot, uh, lost teeth, you know, surgery. He misses one and he's back. Like, Mario Ferraro does <laughs> not games unless he physically can't get on the ice so um coaches love him players love him like you can see that um but don't expect him to kind of come in and be some like offensive you know uh genius or like some shutdown defenseman he's a he's a hard worker or, like blue collar type of a defenseman yeah i mean i i think he would be looked at as one of those guys just like a hard to play against hard-nosed defenseman who can play on your second pair i think that's what Toronto will be looking for out of him if they did bring him in uh, and you know maybe he could grow into something you know, grow into that shutdown role but uh, that's ideally what I think you would be looking for if you were the Leafs inquiring on on a Mario Ferraro um, so we got the Leafs we got the Sharks going down uh, tomorrow night down the Shark Tank I'm curious uh, a if you have any questions for me or b uh, you know what are you excited to see from this matchup, you know, you don't get to see Toronto play too often, especially in San Jose. So what do you, what excites you about them coming to town? Or is there anyone that you're going to be locked in on tomorrow? Oh, future shark, William Nylander, of course. Right. Uh, you know, <laughs> uh, yeah, uh, he's going to be the bell, you know, the bell of the ball when it comes to free agency. I know it, it, that's a, a hot topic for you guys trying to figure out what to do with Nylander uh, going forward. But no, I'm, I'm excited to watch real offense uh, for once. It'll be interesting <laughs> to see how the Sharks, uh, you know, what they can kind of learn. As you said, like the Sharks are 
in the early parts of their rebuild. And, you know, what happens when you start to kind of pair these guys, you have like a, you know, Will Smith coming for eventually for, for San Jose, their first round pick from this year, hopefully a, a Macklin Celebrini in the future, like um, kind of seeing the blueprint of, of, of where the San Jose will be willing to go. But yeah, I, I, and it's going to be fun too, because we get, we get a, a very rare home and home where uh, it's, you know, we play on Saturday and then Tuesday they're playing yeah. in Toronto. So it's uh, you wonder if maybe if, if things get a little chippy at the end of Saturday night's game, uh, then if that carries over to Tuesday uh, type of, of situation. But, you know, I think this is going to be uh, the Leafs are just more talented. I, I think it's going to be like a five one victory for the Leafs. I, I do not expect this to be competitive for San Jose. I hope that's the case. Obviously, I- I'll tell you this, though. The Leafs now, granted, last night, they kind of bucked the trend, but man, do they ever play down to their opponents. And, and for whatever <laughs> reason, like they've got a losing record against like bottom seven. Like Columbus, teams. I know. Yeah. Oh, Columbus, they, they, they they got, they've lost they, They've lost to Columbus. They gave up six goals. They lost 9-3 to Buffalo. The other day, they've lost twice to the Chicago Blackhawks. Like this team has lost a lot of games and given up a lot of points to teams at the bottom of the standing. So yeah, it's, it's far from a guarantee. I'll say that the Leafs cannot take this game for granted and just look and be like, ah, you know, as long as we get three goals, we should be good. Um, I'm hoping that Toronto realizes and, and plays a similar game to the way that they did the other night against Anaheim. And granted, I don't know if you watched that game at all, but Lucas Dostal had a 50 on his head. Oh, it was incredible yes. the way that he did. And he's, you know, he's a good young goaltender, granted, but Unna- uh, unknown goaltender, apparently. But yes, uh, uh, you saw yeah, that? No, did that, you see that? Yes. Uh, yeah. No, I've, I've watched a lot of, uh, you know, of, of a dose side of, you know, in his AHL days with the barricade yeah. and the goal is going at. And yeah, he is, he's, they, I don't know how they keep doing it, but the Ducks, they, they pick goalies and they're, they're pretty good at picking and developing their goalies. So, uh, yeah, yeah he's, he's going to be a menace uh, for a while to go, but yeah, uh, for the Leafs. So I think you have to kind of keep digging to play down to the competition at this game. So, like I said, I, you'll see the Sharks play like they're, they're kind of formulas. They play really well the first kind of 20 to 30 minutes of the game, but they're just not a 60 minute team right now. They, they just don't have the horses to play a full 60 minutes. And, um, you know, it, it's, it's so hard for them to generate offense a consistent offense and um yeah so i expect especially with all the talent that the toronto can put out there on any line um i the, it's just going to be too much for san jose so we'll see how much toronto's partied over the last couple of days i believe there was uh, an extra night in socal uh for them so hopefully they don't come out sluggish to start that game and find themselves down early but it is entirely possible that that could happen uh we'll see should be uh should be an entertaining one at uh, at the very least all right buddy good stuff uh really fun really appreciate you taking the time to join me today uh no problem thanks for having me on buddy Absolutely. That'll do it for us here today on the podcast. I'd like to thank you all for listening and supporting the show. You can subscribe to the Locked On Leafs podcast and the Locked On Sharks podcast on all platforms and receive daily content from both teams. You can follow myself on X at Mickey underscore Canuck. You can also follow JD at My Fry Hole. Can you explain that one to me? Why? Well, at uh, it's My a Fry Hole. Futurama reference. So, uh, yeah, it's a Futurama reference. Oh, Go watch okay, uh, okay. the episode when, uh, yeah, they with Stephen Hawking and they travel back in time. So mm, Stephen Hawking got himself in some trouble this week too. <laughs> <laughs> but that's Ugh. for another podcast. That <laughs> we that's don't for- have time to get into that bad boy. Uh, nope. <laughs> thanks so much again. Um, and uh, yeah, go check out JD's podcast as well if you want to hear uh, all things going on with the San Jose Sharks. Uh, I'll be back with another episode for y'all on Monday. Enjoy your weekends. Until then, uh, keep it locked right here on Locked on Leafs.